see here. Just got to get this post up. just get everybody in here just give it a few more minutes guys and we will have this up and ready to go let's get everybody in here real quick guys and once we get everybody in we'll just start off on exactly what we need to do just give me one more minute good now I think we got everybody that we need to all right let's just go ahead and scroll down all right guys just a few more minutes we're gonna let everybody join in make sure everybody is well aware of what's going on make sure everybody is joining so we can make sure that we have full attendance before we get started let me turn on the light here and bring up my desk. Rise up with me. Come on. All right. It's going to be a good day. We're going to have a good good weekly prep. I think this is going to be a beautiful thing. We're going to try it on this platform here. Uh, let's see here. All right. Things are looking good, guys. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon, actually. It's 12 o'clock here in Michigan, Eastern Time. Uh, we got uh, Carlos. He's out there on vacation, um, so he's uh, he's having me take over doing this, so we can uh, take a look at everything that he's brought up for us and uh, everything that he has laid out for us uh, to take a look at. And I also have my own watch list that I brought to the table for you guys. If you want to do any type of chatter, any kind of talk, you can go ahead and leave it in the comment section, guys. Uh, more than happy to uh, answer any questions that I can. Just know that I specialize in technical analysis. Fundamentals, not, not so much my thing, guys. Uh, but what I like to look at is the chart. I want to see what's in the chart. I want to see where those differences are and what we can capitalize from um, using just your support and resistance and then your moving averages, obviously, in order to see anything bigger. So what we'll do is we will go through everything that he had on his uh, watch list here. Uh, and if you guys don't know which watch list I'm talking about, if you go to Robinhood Stock Market Watch List on Facebook, if you're a member, which if you are joining us right now, usually you are the member. If you're not, you can go ahead and click in the description. You can see where Robinhood Stock Market Watch List is. There is a wait to get in. We go through that about once a week to see. Uh, we got to file through everything and see what we can get in and what we can't. So good afternoon, guys. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. And if anybody else starts funneling in, that's a-okay. We'll uh, we'll go ahead and let them funnel in. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off right down here uh, with Neo. So there's going to be about a list of ten, or uh, let's see, about six or seven. Uh, that he had brought up on his featured section in that Robinhood stock market watch list. So what I want you guys to do is you can follow through by clicking on his page and looking through that. If not, I'll have it all up here right here for you. And if you guys have any questions or anything like that, just throw it up in the comments section and I'll be happy to look over and go through that as we go, guys. So don't be shy. Make sure you're leaving some comments in the comment section. So we'll start with NEO. So NEO, we can tell we've had this NEO on this downward trend line here, guys. Under this downward trend line, under this 200 day moving average, that's going to be an area where I want to see this thing ship shape up. Okay. If we can get this thing to ship shape up above that 200 day moving average, that's when NEO is going to look very fruitful for myself. But we do want to keep in mind 
because you know I'm a bear with bull horns, right? Uh, at the base here of NEO, it is holding new higher lows on the daily. So that's great for NEO. And we're also seeing on the hourly these new higher lows being put in on higher volume, okay? Now, after we go through this list, we'll also go over the overall market, the S&P 500, the Qs. We'll go over some of the indices so that way we get a broader understanding of what we can look for in the market because right now we are running in to some resistance. So be aware that we might see some pullbacks here in the overall market. SAIC, so we have SAIC, this is the science application. Uh, we can see that it's been bouncing off this 200 day moving average and rising higher. Now the 200 day moving average has caught up to it. This looks like a slower mover at 1.8% average daily range. So keep that in mind guys, it is a slower mover, but it is bouncing off this 200 and looking pretty fruitful in this. But we need to keep in mind both with Leva or with Neo, um, let me just make sure the earnings here aren't coming up relatively soon. So Neo's earnings are on the 28th of this month. So we still have some time to wait on Neo's uh, Neo's earnings, but we have to keep in mind with SAIC science application that their earnings are on the third. So that's tomorrow before market central time, okay? I'm sorry, before before market central standard time, okay? Next up on his list was the CAG or Contra Brands, um, bottle manufacturer, drinks, things like that. Uh, Contra Brands, is, as you can see, they have a earnings expectant to come out on 4 5 23. So that's just in a few days here, guys. So keep that in mind um, with CAG. We are above a rising 200 day moving average, so that looks very fruitful for this company. If we look at the hourly, we can't see too much action except for in this area here, we could probably use that area as a risk. If it wants to break that area, that might mean that this stock wants to head lower. So I like that $37 area for CAG for risk in mind. Now we have AYI uh, in just a few days. So on the 4th, they have earnings coming out. AYI, Acutic Brands, very interesting company here. Uh, it does look like it's finding some shredding action on this 200 day moving average. The first thing I see on this daily here is this beautiful uptrend, right? And this uptrend, it looked like we had a quick crack of that uptrend right at that 200 day moving average and now is heading higher. That uptrend you could use as support if you wanted to, maybe keep that in mind for a risk, but also we need to keep in mind that we wanna see this thing chug higher in this area, creating this wedge formation down in this area. So if it wants to continue higher, I think in the next couple of days, we'll see if this resistance is gonna show new higher lows inside this wedge pattern and it might hold its gain. So let's look at LW. So Lamb Weston, I just realized that this was like a, a McDonald's, uh, like a fast food, maybe not a McDonald's. We shouldn't compare it to a McDonald's, but a McDonald's um, fast food type of, uh, 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 of, uh, of uh, sector here. Now it is well above the 200 day moving average. It's been holding very true in a downward market, right? It's been holding off these COVID lows and continuing to press higher into this year. They have a uh, pretty good earnings expectancy, but let's just take a little peaky gander here. It's on the 6th, guys. This 6th of this month is when we can expect LW to be giving off their earnings. And with capitalization, cap, when it is rised this high, this fast, especially look at its previous earnings, guys. We had an earnings beat, oh goodness, by... Uh, looks like uh, 50 cents per per share. Uh, I'm sorry, the earnings was uh, at the expectant was 75 cents, and it came out a dollar 28, so almost 50 cents there. What a beautiful move off of that! And as you guys know, I love to play those earnings expectancies. If they come out on high earnings, you can play these range breaks, whether it's on the five minute or the hourly. Uh, these are great to try and capitalize on in those areas. So absolutely wonderful for Lamb Weston there. Something to keep our eyes on for the sixth, guys. It's also a dividend payer, which is pretty nice. 
STZ Constellation Brands, another one on the old Carlos Moreno uh, uh, watch list on that Robin Hood stock market watch list on Facebook, guys, in the description if you need to. Uh, go ahead and click on there, and, and there's a little bit of a wait list to join, but if you're in here, you might be from there, so I'm happy you're here with me today. Hit that subscribe button if you like my stock commentary or analysis. I show up every Friday uh, to the pre-market prep. There's only three things I ask. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and of course, be here for that pre-market prep. All things that I've asked are free, and I'll never ask for your money. Next up, we have STZ, Constellation Brands, trading below a 200-day moving average, but finding support right down here, this beautiful base down here at 210. If this 210 wants to hold, that could be a very nice uh, achievement here for STZ Constellation Brands and might pose as a nice risk for it to head higher. But as it pushes up here, we are going to find resistance up here at 225, so please do keep that in mind. We want to see a pullback and a new higher low being formed on this hourly. So we do have this new higher low right here, but the next new higher low, let's see, put up above this 217, and I think that might be a tasty little trade in that area. So a few more days on that one. Okay, we got about three more left in this, and then we're going to go over the overall market and to see how strong the overall market is in these situations. Uh, with the overall market where it's at, I think you're going to be very surprised at my analysis on that. So keep it in mind, guys. We are going to do our best to get there. So stay focused. We got a few more to go through. MSM. Now, this thing has been coiling, uh, trending. It looks higher here off of these $71 bottoms. This looks great now above a 200-day moving average, holding this trend line to the upside. It only moves 2% uh, on its average daily range, now trading at $84 above a 200-day moving average. This could look speculatively uh, uh, good or bad in this situation. We're right into this resistance area. I could draw this out for you now so you guys have a better understanding. There's going to be a lot of resistance right here in this area. Lots of price action between 84 and 86 area. So keep that in mind while it's up here. We want to see it how, how it trades, how it's actionable in these areas. But of course, on the 4th, it's going to show its true colors with its earnings. Will the earnings come out better than expected or worse? Or maybe we do trade sideways in this con uh, consolidation. Um, not a quick mover on this one, but one to keep an eye on. We also have DLO. DLO has earnings coming up on the 4th as well. Don't sleep on DLO, but under a 200 day moving average, I still think we need to give this thing a little bit more time before we uh, <laughs> before we uh, take off. Money, 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 money is in here. Good morning, good afternoon actually. I'm used to saying good morning, but yeah, we'll get to that. We'll look at AULT in a little bit. Uh, let me get through quite a few of these tickers we need to run through uh, for the stock market watch list that we do every Sunday. So we'll just check this out, guys. This DLO uh, is still trading below a 200-day moving average. We'll keep an eye on that actual watch list. Now we have two more on Carlos's uh, Carlos's watch list. Then we'll go through uh, the overall market sediment that I can see, and then we will definitely run through uh, my market watch list for my overall bullish sediment on this possible pullback that we have coming in pretty hard pullback I'm, a, I'm anticipating actually so RPM here just trading sideways uh, you know if you put money in RPM back here uh, on uh, 2020, 9, 2020, your money hasn't changed. It's went up, it's went down, but it's still just trading sideways. So RPM doesn't look very actionable. It's not something I'm uh, willing to even trade until this earnings comes out. If we want to gap up over any type of area of consolidation, I'll be looking for continuation. But as of right now, RPM is kind of a sleepy hollow. LVI. So Levi, this looks very actionable here, guys. I was excited to get to LV, uh, uh, Levi, LVI, L-E-V-I, I should say. So earnings is on the 6th. So we only have a few more days for that. But keep in mind on these earnings here, guys, 
This is now above a 200 day moving average, holding new higher lows. This is also a pride and true company, meaning it's been around for a long time. It's, it is a manufacturer that's been around for quite some time. So if we get an earnings gap up and we gap up over any of these areas, um, this being beat down where it has been, we might actually see this thing moving higher. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on Levi uh, on the six, because if we get a nice pop, that could be absolutely beautiful. So that's what we have on the stock market watch list. We also have quite a few that I would like to run through here, guys. These are things that are showing pride in true colors when it comes to the um, uh, the earnings per share being higher, the, the um, push up above 200 day moving average, showing that it's holding price action. So let me just run through some of these. I would definitely like for you guys to put these on your watch list so that way you can watch these movers, see how these movers work, and then we can actually you know take a trade as needed um, if it holds to your patterns guys so we have to make sure that we keep a good eye on these patterns and we have an understanding how they actually move okay so on on this is very very speculative a lot of people not i shouldn't say very speculative but a lot of people are speculating on this trade if we end up in a bull market uh, this could be a nice winner because it's been holding up against the downfall, the onslaught of the sell-off during SPY, and it's also showed amazing EPS growth, future growth, um, it's multi-use with, it's, um, with its shoes, with its wear, with its um, accessories and things like that. We have a huge round of volatility coming in here is where the sell-off at this area has been on lower volume. So that shows me that this is something I definitely wanna keep an eye on. And uh, I, I'm just watching this 10-day moving average to try and catch up to it. And I wanna see how it trades around here. Of course, I have my, my alert at the breakout, not meaning that I would just take that at the breakout, but it is there to alert me that, hey, we're breaking new highs and this might be an actionable area to see for a pullback so I can keep an eye on a new higher low being formed. So on this hourly, we do have new higher lows being formed at this uh, base around this $29 area uh, and now making a new higher low around this $30 area. So that looks absolutely beautiful for that stock and I cannot wait to see what is to come for ONON. Next up, we have FSLY. This is making a beautiful cup and handle on the hourly, but as you guys know, I like more of the cup and handle on the weekly because of the William O'Neill's How to Make Money in Stocks. So he does the um, investment uh, business daily, our IWM. Uh, you guys can go look up that on your own time, but I've done a lot of study in the past few years on that, and what I like to see are these cup and handle patterns that start to form. And when you see a lot of these in this type of market, and there's a lot of bearish sentiment, it's nice to just keep these in the back of your head, knowing that they are outperforming, knowing that they're doing well, knowing that they're trading a lot of volume in these areas. Um, with that being said, that should show us where we wanna put our money if we do end up being in a bull market, if we do hold new higher lows on that SPY. So um, let me just keep running through and then we'll get the overall market, okay guys? So D-U-O-L, put this on your watch list. Do not sleep on this. It looks very, very well. We have H-E-A-R. Uh, this is uh, something that caught my interest. This is the Turtle Beach Corporation. They, they were the ones with the gaming headsets. Now they've branched out to make a lot cheaper headsets, more accessible to people, but but um, I'm just noticing some accumulation down here. So I'm noticing a lot more green volume down here uh, on these bases. We have a push making new higher lows, another push in volume here, breaking above the 200 day moving average and this top right here. Okay, so it, it broke out just a little bit over that top. So now this is an area where I wanna really keep my eye on, on H-E-A-R, the Turtle Beach Corporation, just because if this thing has gotten so beaten down over the past few years, um, this might be a nice area to buy back up for a short period of time. I know I don't believe in this company for the mega future, but like Warren Buffett would say, you know, cigar butt. 
this thing might have one more hit on it, one more yucky hit on it, and this thing might pop back up, clearing this gap level back up to this $13 area. Now, if you can find risk and you can find a trade in this, more power to you. That could be absolutely uh, a beautiful thing, guys. It could be an absolute beautiful thing uh, for you. What I am looking for is to see how this is going to trade in this $10 area, this psychological and this technical area. If this thing wants to pose a nice push, a nice threat to this resistance, we might get a beautiful pop to the north side. So that's just something I'm keeping an eye on. Next up, we have ACCD. Now, I don't like the fundamentals on these, but you're not going to when you're looking at um, some certain stocks. Um, but if we do just look up ACCD, you guys will see that, um, you know, that it... If we just look at the overall quick statement of this, it doesn't look like they're pulling up so much profit. It looks like they're, you know, using a lot of um, uh, of, of investment and risk in order to take and make profit. So uh, just so you know, it engages in the provision of personalized health and benefit solutions. So we know that this is a health stock and with health stock comes risk. Uh, any pharmaceutical, biopharm, anything like that, it has more than just normal risk, okay? No risk, no Rari though, right guys? But I I do like this cup, I do like this handle, and I do like where we could take a risk right here around that $13 area. Now, as you guys will always hear me say, I'm always starting with risk first. I'm always gonna start with risk first. I'm very risk adverse, always has been, always have been since a child, and I will take that to the grave with me. So if I can find a good risk area and know where I am wrong at, I will hold true to that the best I can, as long as my discipline's key, to the upside. So, you know, I'm a bull. Uh, I'm actually a bear in a bull market. I'm a, I'm a bull. I'm a bear with bull horns is what I always like to say. I like to swipe down, but when a bull market is here, we'll keep on keeping on. So SMCI, this is a little something, something guys. SMCI trading at 106.55. I liked it here in this green area for a breakout. We did play. We did make some money on that breakout back in this area, but with the overall market sentiment, it did look more like a sell-off here. So I took money out 50 share, or I'm sorry, half of 50% of the shares off here and sold out the rest at break even. This thing has broke down since and now has broke back up through. What I like about SMCI is it is doing very well in this market and it's also in one of the leaders, which is the microchip computers, the, the semiconductor space, and which is always nice to have in that semiconductor spaces right there, okay? So SMCI is looking good here. I did like this as a buy. I actually called that out in the live chat. I know some of you guys were there in the live chat when I said, man, I need to just take some of my trades and I need to buy up in this area. But you know, I really wanted to see this thing come down to that psychological and technical pattern of $100. It just couldn't make it. It was acting a little too strong. So I do like to see strong. I like to see that strength and I like to see it holding this base. So I do like SMCI and I like that as one of my number one uh, trades to keep an eye on. We also have HUBS, which has been very well talked about amongst all the communities. We have a rising 200 and curling higher 200 moving average, looking really, really nice in this area. Uh, it has been overall beaten down and is looking like a cup and handle on the daily. From time to time, I like to bring up my weekly here and just take a little peeky gander at this beautiful cup and handle. Now this is, well, you guys can actually see it. Back here is the cup and handle, the same cup and handle handle we are looking at on HUBS. So these aren't buy or sell recommendations, guys. This is just something that I'm taking a look at. I'm throwing my big chin around on the show just to show you what I do or what I don't know. Okay. I, I, I can't, uh, I can't whip out a crystal ball and act like I'm some magician. All I can give you these technical patterns and show you the best risk reward that I can take for myself. So before we continue on, I want to make sure we get to money, money, money's question with AULT. So is this a low float? Yeah. So AULT is a low float stock and we'll go over those in a little bit, guys. Um, I have a few low floaters that we can take a look at, but right now we want to make sure we get through these and then the rest of the overall market. So right here we have on the weekly, this is a beautiful for the wing. In this case, guys, you know, wing looks very good technically. It looks it looks pretty good fundamentally as well uh, for as far as I can look, as far as my eyes can see on fundamentals. But what I don't like about wing is 
I tried them and I don't like them. I don't know about you guys if you like wing or not, but I tried them. I don't like them. We're not a fan favorite of wings, so I don't want to put my money into something that I've already tried and I don't like, you know. Uh, but wing does look good here. Oh, look at this beautiful curling 200 day moving average. It's absolutely beautiful for the company. Um, and this thing really at this cup and handle here really could break out. Now, this isn't a true William O'Neill's type cup and handle. This more is rather than this. Uh, but uh, it's still a beautiful trade. It's still looking very, very good for this uh, for this overall uh, stock in itself. Okay, so one. Let's do. We'll do uh, two more. We'll do one. No, we'll do one more, and I'll show you. I'll show you an interesting one. Uh, money, money, money. Since I know you like those uh, those low float stocks. So we have W D A Y W. W-D-A-Y. Uh, I actually tried to take this on this breakout. I love these tops, right? When they break these tops uh, like this, it's just beautiful trades. And I actually tried to grab this on the hourly break here. My wife was here and I said, oh, I, I found my next trade, right? Here it is. You know, beautiful cup, beautiful handle, beautiful breakout on those highs. Uh, the issue with it was, is I already had used my full margin in my Microsoft trade. So I had no more equity. I used $55,000 guys on one trade and I had no other buying power so uh, I just marked it out I just uh, paper traded this basically because I had no more margin I was maxed out and I'm glad I was uh, it was a beautiful trade for Microsoft but if I was in this I would still be holding because this is well above that 10 day moving average and looking very very clean so Let's, uh, there's, there's so many on this. There's so many beautiful looking patterns and setups uh, to go through and to show you guys. But what I think I want to go through is a few more speculative stocks just because they are a lot of fun. So let's look at GOOS. So why am I looking at this? Well, a few reasons. GOOS popped up on my scanner because it is looking good uh, at least as far as the eye can see, um, excess, uh, well, it is looking well financially, okay? But what caught my eye is not only is it holding new higher lows and we have some volume being traded above a 200 moving average, but it has over a 30% short interest. That 30% short interest looks absolutely amazing to me because if this thing starts to break all of these uh, these lower highs, I think those are going to be the areas where people are going to start stopping out if they are short. Okay, so I think that this thing can really get rip roaring uh, in this area and it's got a nice area for risk. So if you know how much money you're willing to lose on a trade, that's a beautiful thing because then you can make sure that you are A-OK -okay in the trade and you can set a stop loss, walk away, forget it. Like a rotisserie chicken, set it and forget it, baby. All right, um, next up we have AEHR. AEHR, very speculative, okay? We can see that this thing moves about 8.3% in a day. It can even move quicker than that. Um, so just keep in mind that AEHR is right back down here at its support area. Now I don't, I'm not saying anybody needs to get into AEHR or do anything like that because it just, it's too choppy. It's too whipsaw, it's too axmal. But um, with their EPS and with their guidance, with everything that's going on, it's very, very interesting to see where this stock's gonna go, especially because I've been watching this thing build since back here. Uh, and I've only been a part of it a few times. I've made some money on AEHR, but nowhere near as much as I should have. So uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on all of that. Now, there's a few other mentions we can go over a x o n m e l i those are definitely ones that you want to put on your watch list they are breaking new highs uh in this but what i think we need to go through guys is the overall market cap so let's go over the s p 500 and let me talk why i think we are in a very interesting area here guys i think this is very very important so if you've made it this far pat yourself on the back because you definitely are here for the pre-market prep so this is the weekly prep guys and the biggest thing that i see in this area is this 410 on spy why well because it's forming a beautiful head and shoulders pattern for one and two it's going right into two medians of resistance and what do i mean by that let me zoom I'm out here on the four hours so you can get a better understanding here is a shoulder here is a head and here is a shoulder so why is this a double like uh like a double-edged sword here well one we're coming up into an area that has already told us in this 410 area this price action area that we could easily fail we could easily come right back down here okay 
but we also have this bout of liquidity that's sitting here at 410 that people were defending at one point in time, okay? So there it sits right now in that push right at the end of the day and in aftermarket right into that area of resistance. Now, what's gonna happen here, I do not know, but I like to have the idea that I can react to two different scenarios. One, we let's just, let's just imagine here so many people are on the wrong side here. This thing just explodes and continues higher, having more volume on the second day push on Monday, meaning William O'Neill's uh, after rally follow through day, the second day has to have more volume than the previous day to the north side. Okay, so if that happens, wow, watch out. Long traders, the bulls are back. Bears, watch out for your shorts. People are gonna get in squeezy squads left and right. But that is the if you imagine, because what I would like to think that is gonna happen is we are gonna definitely see an imminent pullback. We're gonna see it pulling back here from 410, the 410 area, and then as it pulls back, we are gonna find a new high or low somewhere. Where? Well, if we take the trend and we just pull it up from where it was, we can say, if I could do this here, we could say that this uptrend line could probably pull back anywhere around this 400, guys. I love this $400 area. It's very, very uh, heavy for support. Um, so I think we do get a pullback and I think we get a big realization that we are into some resistance here. And if we're into that resistance and we pull back, maybe we get a bounce. Maybe we break down further from here. But either way, I found a lot of support in this area. So whether you're bearish or whether you're bullish, uh, I see resistance on a technical pattern and I see support on a technical pattern between 400 and 410. So that is our range and that's where we stand. Now, the SPY is above a 200 day moving average beautifully on a daily holding new higher lows since what is this, October? Yes, since October, the 12th was our bottom. Now the IWM is shuffling higher, breaking this area of resistance. Can it form new higher low on its pullback, maybe using 177 or 176 as its support? That would be nice. Uh, obviously, if it breaks those areas, we would have to take a better look into the charts, but that should be in the weeks to come. The QQQ, as you guys know, is absolutely exciting. This thing is just rip roaring to the north side. So hold on to those longs if you got them. But obviously, keep in mind, we are into an area of resistance. The last time it was trading at 320, we ran right into this area and sold off pretty gosh darn hard, okay? So keep that in mind. And guys, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do so. I'm here every Friday. And if I'm doing this for Carlos, I'll be here every Sunday too. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So anytime that I go live, you'll get an alert on your phone. So that way you can see it and you can see what is happening. What's happening, baby. All right, so we can go through some honorable mentions here, obviously, like Tesla. Tesla is just carrying on wayward sun, breaking my upward trend line, which was beautiful because then it speculated as these shorts, make some money on the shorts off that bounce. And then as it broke through again, wow, we were here watching this breakthrough and it was just a beautiful thing during live. That's what I love about the commentary and stock analysis, guys, is you just always have the opportunity to see it first. And if you can see it first and you can see it here, well, that's why I want you to be a part of Lo-Fi Trader. Next up, we have Microsoft. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful push to the high side, right closer, getting ever closer to these peaks of 293. So I think we are due for a pullback again, maybe coming down to retest this 272. Either way, guys, this looks very healthy for the overall market, regardless of your stance in the market. This is making the market look very healthy. And if we can get a pullback, a constructive pullback, that would look even more healthy for the overall market. So we have Amazon below a 200 day moving average still, but starting to curl up. Meta on a little breakout here. Uh, who knows what's going to happen in this area, but wow, if we stay running to the north side with this overall market, we might start seeing some gaps to the north side in Meta. NVDA as well, another great mover, a beautiful push to the north side. Please keep in mind though, a lot of these are running into resistance like Apple, AAPL looks like it's running right into this resistance downtrend area. So if it wants to break out from here, it might really break out. But again, guys, I'm expecting some resistance, some pullback. I'm expecting a little bit of that to happen. So we shall see.
And the last, uh, the last thing I want to mention is Google. Google actually looks very actionable, trying to hold that 200-day moving average instead of using it as resistance, like we can see below. Now it looks like it's trying to use it as support underneath it. So that looks really good too. All right. So that's about all I have for your overall fang mang stocks, as I like to call them. But some honorable mentions, um, I wanna talk to you guys about AI. As you guys have seen, I've posted about it a few times. That's on a breakout. And if this sector is hot, guys, we have some, some low float stocks like GFAI and BBAI that you can take a look at. Now, I would never recommend buying on these big pushes up, but keep in mind there's a heavy level of resistance around 12. So keep that in mind, guys, it did push right Right up into this area of resistance at 10 but if it can hold new higher lows on this if you're looking at the leader that would be ai currently or your microsoft's or your nvidia's okay but if you're looking at these very speculatively uh leaders are the best these are the laggers but if you're looking for a new higher lows on the hourly this is going to need a little bit more time to start working out so keep that in mind guys if it wants to do something it needs to clear out some of these liquidity levels above it before heading higher just like ai actually did itself it cleared out these liquidity levels that we had drawn out for you and it's popped up since and it's cleared these liquidity levels out and now pushed higher so will this make new higher lows or will it come all the way back down to 29 before bouncing again or maybe this just fails completely either way this was a beautiful trade on ai and that keeps us our eyes open on trades like gfai bbai small float stocks like that so well, guys, I threw this all together for you on a whim. Uh, we couldn't find a spot in the Robinhood Stock Market Facebook group, so we uh, we pulled out some we pulled out some strings there. If you guys have anything left to ask or any questions on the stock analysis, just go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. And next Sunday we will get back to it. Or if you got something now, just throw it up. I'll be on here for about. 30 more seconds, and if we don't have any more questions, um, this will be saved, so you guys can all refer to it later. But it is uh, April 2nd, 2023, and this is your Robinhood Stock Market watch list for the week, and I hope to see you guys next week. Don't forget, uh, if you hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I will be here with you guys every Friday live. I do live commentary. I do live stock analysis. I stick up with the comments. I make sure the community is taken care of first. The description in there, uh, you can go ahead and hit that like. Hit that subscribe button, guys, because I'm here every single Friday. And I'm also going to be bringing you out two other pieces of content as well, like when on the stock market watch list likes these Sundays right here that you're seeing. I could probably start doing these every Sunday as long as we keep getting such a beautiful turnout like we are seeing today. So thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next Sunday, Friday, and throughout the week. Thanks.